Okay, okay, enough of the gloomy news. Let's hope it all bounces back in the near future and we get back to the type of scene which uh, we witnessed on Pub Street. And that was a trailer for vlog number 10 in the series Asia 2020. Siem Reap, Cambodia, Pub Street, then and now, COVID-19. Find the link for this vlog at the end of this video. And literally in just 24 hours, we went from this to this. Yeah, we're on uh, what they call Beer Street. Beer Street. It's the same thing they had in Siem Reap, Cambodia. Hub Street. And this is in Myanmar. You're viewing Travels with Lobo and Barbara. Asia 2020. Vlog number 16. By the way, this trip ended as planned end of January 2020. The world may have been turned upside down since then, but our memories remain. In our previous vlog in the series, Asia 2020, vlog number 14, we were in Siem Reap. Easiest way to get to Yangon is to fly, and that would be via Bangkok. Actual flight time, 1 hour 22. It will be 3 hours with the stopover in Bangkok. Yes, for us, this was a bucket list moment so exciting, perhaps only matched when I later on the same trip flew to Sri Lanka. If you want to skip the then and go directly to the now of the COVID-19 crisis, click on 1035. You'll miss a good bit of the blog. First morning in Yangon, capital of Myanmar. Traffic, pretty heavy. No subway here. Lots of public transportation. We're staying at the best western Chinatown. I think the price might be about 60 or 70 US dollars. It says Chinatown, but from our walk around here last night. We're on 19th Street, right downtown next to our hotel, also known as Beer Street. This is the go-to place in downtown Yangon. Remember, this video was shot in November 2019, and Beer Street was packed with people. This uh, was the end of our meal, our first meal in uh, Myanmar, Yangon, Myanmar. And uh, how was the meal, Barb? It was very good. What did we have? We had barbecue. Yeah. So it had skewers of some chicken. Let's stop there because this was a very unusual experience. We were told to go down the block on Beer Street to a particular place to pick the ingredients of our meal. Well, let's take that walk and uh, see what Beer Street was like back then. Barb's gonna show us where, where our meal came okay. from. Yeah. Go Barb, go. Right. This is pretty incredible. But <laughs> this is where our meal came from.
This looks like uh, a pretty intense area, and it is. Here's a guy selling drinks. If you catch glimpses of it in Myanmar, the uh, the people put this uh, sort of cream in their face. Yeah, this is where our meal came from. You go up to this place, and you just you just pick out what you want, and they will barbecue it for you and bring it to the restaurant a hundred meters down the street. That's where we ate. So what do we have, Barb? Well, we have, let's see. Speak up, please. Uh, we had some chicken. wings. Wings. We had, this is chicken. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had some tofu. Tofu. We had, uh, where are those little potatoes? The little potatoes were, were, were oh, here. Up top, up top. Yeah, so potatoes. Potatoes. Oh, broccoli. Broccoli, broccoli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that, isn't that nice? Okay. That's, that's a Huawei. Yes. Huawei. I had phone. liver. I had the liver. Oh, here. she had liver. Do you like liver? Do you like this liver? Oh, chicken liver. Yeah. So good. Very good. So good. Do you like it? Yes. You like it? Ah, no. <laughs> this ah, no reminded me of something I read in the guidebook that the Burmese people do not like being photographed. Despite that, I never found the same reaction again on my trip. Okay. Hey, look, Barb. I know we could have had those too. Oh man, alive! We could have had these here. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sure they're. Well, look at the price. They're they're expensive. Yeah. That's only three fifty for one. Not even Not, three bucks. For, and we're we're talking Canadian. A giant shrimp. As we look down, Beer Street. Chinatown. Oh yeah, this is in Chinatown. Oh yeah, Barb says we could have eaten bugs. Well, insects. Insects, insects, insects. See, first they fry them with juice from a battery. That's for the light. Look at that! Wow. Small, medium, and large. These are these are lotus. Some type of bug. No, this uh, insect hawker on Beer Street is selling uh, crickets, which the United Nations describes as the protein source of the future. Look at that. Come on, that's enough. Oh, there we go. See? Right on the street. I can't believe it. We had uh, a large Chang beer. We had a large Chang beer, and yes, we are in my, Myanmar, Myanmar, Myanmar. A large Chang beer, and all that came to how many jets? Uh, 9,000, including the tip. 9,000, including the tip, and we converted that to Canadian, and that came to? Oh, what did we say? $7.80, and when he converted to American, it was practically free, right? He's sitting in the only air-conditioned restaurant on this whole street. Right. 35 degrees outside. Right. And but, everybody else is sitting outside. But the so this was our, our waiter who served us well. Have Thank a good you. evening. Thank you. Very nice. Nothing says Myanmar more than the face painting you see on many people. It's known as tanaka, and the yellowish-white substance is derived from the barks of the Mariana tree. Nice. After a few beers, uh, the uh, steadiness of the camera decreases. This was a busy scene on Beer Street back in November 2019. I returned from Asia, specifically from Sri Lanka, at the end of January. 2020. At that time, there were rumblings of COVID-19. Since then, the world has been literally turned upside down by COVID-19. Particularly hard hit are the tourist destinations of Southeast Asia, including Myanmar. When I say hard hit, I don't necessarily mean by number of cases because the cases are low. Hard hit in terms of tourism. Tourism is dead. During the height of the crisis, which is only recently, you could drive a car down Beer Street. There are no people.
Information is hard to come by, but I did find this specific reference to Chinatown's 19th Street. That is Beer Street, a popular evening haunt for locals and tourists. It is now desolate as most Yangon bars comply with new restrictions despite the lack of enforcement. There you have it. It's now in the middle of May 2020, and we all know that the world has been ravaged by the COVID-19 pandemic. Worldwide, 323,000 deaths. In my own country, Canada, almost 6,000 deaths. In my province, British Columbia, 146 deaths to date. But at this point, we know for the most part that the curve has been flattened. The most COVID-19 cases and deaths have occurred in the United States, as you can see, followed by Russia, Brazil, UK, and Spain. When you look at Myanmar on this scale, uh, you can see it's stunningly low, like its neighbors, Vietnam and Cambodia and even Thailand. Four is the number of cases per million. That's one of the lowest in the world. And the number of deaths attributed to COVID-19 is only six. Even if you wanted to go to Myanmar at this time with the expanded restrictions, you couldn't travel there, you couldn't get a visa, and neither would you want to. With the shutdown of tourism, the effect on the economy is devastating. If you want to know more about the restrictions, just hit the pause button and read what's happening. You'll see that the same restrictions that apply in your home country probably apply here in Myanmar. During the height of the crisis, which is only recently, you could drive a car down Beer Street. There are no people. Well, the tourist sector may have flatlined. There are signs of hope, as is witnessed by reports only yesterday. Have a look at these uh, guidelines, which uh, allow for a gradual opening, probably just like in your country. Um, again, click on the panels if you wish to read them in detail. But the bottom line, one more time, is you can't travel to Myanmar at this time. Neither would you want to. But let's hope that the future is bright for this wonderful country. And this is an excellent start. Only a couple of days ago, Myanmar police made Asia's biggest drug bust in decades, seizing hundreds of millions of dollars worth of contraband, including unprecedented amounts of methamphetamine. You know what I mean. Now, every crisis uh, creates uh, an addition to our vocabulary, and uh, this one's no exception with the word COVIDiot. Well, a COVIDiot, for those of you whose first language is not English, is a combination of COVID-19 and idiot. So it's COVIDiot. And here I have my example of a covid in Myanmar. Just a couple of days ago, there was a story of a Canadian preacher of Burmese origin who was arrested in Myanmar after telling his congregation that Christians are immune to COVID-19. Who'd have thunk it? Apparently, he would contract the virus himself. Now faces charges over organizing services in defiance of a ban on public gatherings. The word covid might be applicable. Lastly, just before publishing this vlog, I participated in a Yahoo News poll, and as you can see, my answer was not in the majority. Thank you for viewing and uh, joining in our adventure of uh, Asia 2020. You've probably never heard this on YouTube before, but if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and share it, and God knows what to do with it, but give it something positive. See you next Friday. Mm -hmm.